I'm thrilled to be here right now. This is what I'd planned on doing. Um, with the team behind Luck, uh, an animated movie, Skydance Entertainment, Apple TV Plus. Uh, we thank our sponsor for bringing it in. But we're, what we really are grateful for is we bring the talent. Uh, rather than just seeing a clip later tonight, you're going to get to hear from the creators, uh, uh, the sound creators. And uh, we, uh, with apologies, Steve Sledek, supervising editor, sound editor, was not able to be here. But the, uh, the Devin Kelly, Foley, sup- yeah, Foley su- supervisor. Foley supervisor. Yeah. And, and general troublemaker. And yeah, that is we, true. I'll take that. And uh, <laughs> the inimitable uh, Gary Rizzo, Academy Award winning Gary Rizzo, uh, 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 brings this sort of energy to a track. And we want to talk a bit about animation um, and its differences and similarities. But first, we'd just like to give you a feel for what we're, if you haven't seen it yet, could we play the teaser clip? Hello there. Now, I know what you're thinking. Crikey, a black cat is going to bring me bad luck. Show us what you know about luck. Let's drop some knowledge. Luck is different all around the world, like in Scotland, where a black cat like me is considered very lucky. Remember, kids, don't try this at home. Name's Bob, by the way, and this is the land of luck. Morning, Jerry. We work behind the scenes to create those wee lucky and unlucky moments that make up your everyday life. Like these guys, an entire team thinking up the jammy luck. That kind that makes you feel like a million bucks. Okay, maybe a hundred bucks. Of course, then there's the other team working on the not so jammy kind of luck. And they sure love what they do. (laughs) Well, you humans are a complicated lot. And that's why things run so smoothly here. Because no human has ever stepped foot in this place. And with a little bit of luck, they never will. Where am I? Oh, you gotta be kidding. (laughs) So thank you for joining us, Gary and Devin. Um, I I think I want to start out with sort of tone and approach. I mean, it's, it's playful. There's a sort of a fluid choreography in the scenes and not just dance numbers or music videos. It's in the track. I mean, could you start off, Gary, talking about tone when you get to the mix? I mean, what's an overall goal here? Uh, well, um, the way that this movie is set is that in the land of luck, everything is supposed to work out nicely, at least the good luck side of things. Uh, everything is supposed to work very, very smoothly, almost, um, I would say, electric car-like. Everything has to be very slick and, and um, appear as though it's choreographed, but actually things are happening by happenstance in perfect setting. And that was kind of the direction that we were given by Peggy Holmes, our, our director. Make sure that you are communicating it as slick, smooth, but also happenstance. And so, you know, we love direction like that. That yeah. isn't literal direction, yeah. turn that up, turn that down. It's a matter of getting that um, interpretation of the tone. And just to set it up, we also flew it and smooth. We go into bad luck world. We're in the real, the real world for a certain point. So tone and approach, do you, ba- do you contrast those? Do you play, up, play that up significantly or just subtly? Well... You, you're always trying to balance it out so that you're not caught, you know, making these extreme moves. Yeah. But um, it's something that you have to keep conscious, you know, um, that our lead character is one of the most unlucky people in the world. And that's kind of the the deal is that she finds her way into the land of luck and wrecks some havoc. So there are moments when the chaos has to kick in and that's when you break rhythm and 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 that worked, you know, nine out of ten times. When you, when you really want to make the contrast, you break that rhythm. And and Peggy, our, our choreographer, director, is all about knowing what that rhythm really is and what to her feels felt right, feels right, and when to break it and how to break it. Uh, and and the, from the Foley point of view, I mean, we have effects, we have an animated film, but Foley has always sort of provided an anchor, right? Yes. I mean, it's sort of a, yeah. a, an approach. So. Uh, 
from your point of view as Foley, which you might think like a, a toaster, thing, whatever, whatever the sounds are, how do you in Foley approach the two different worlds in terms of articulation or whatever? I mean, yeah, um, that's an excellent question. I think I think it plays off of a lot of what Gary was saying with yeah. um, Foley. Foley, we um, obviously nor in a normal setting, you want to cut everything to perfect literal sync a lot of the time. But I think it's um, creatively we sort of interpreted sync in a more rhythmic way with the Foley. I mean, of course it's not, it's still in sync as much as it should be, but um, there's a lot of times where we decided to make the creative choice with both effects and Foley to cut things in a way that was just fun and rhythmic and that played well with the whole scene and that really contributed to um, the choreography aspect that Gary was talking about where, where, you know, there's music in the scene as well as effects in Foley. And so we're kind of, cutting the Foley in a way that um, like, oh, you know, the she hits the broom and then the broom hits the door and then yeah. the door, <laughs> like the door jams and then the toast flies out of the toaster and hits the wall and slides down. And it's all very um, rhythmic and that's, that's how the scene should play. And so we focused more on, yeah, this, the way that things play in a choreographed it's way. It's interesting to have a certain sort of mechanical sense because we have transportation in the, the land of luck, which is very fluid and everything. And then we have, you know, the real world where there's footsteps going down a city street and cars are honking and a, a bus is coming by and they're getting hit over the head. I mean, is it dancing with Foley? I mean, how do you determine what's an effect and what's, a, what's Foley in animation? Um, I think um, in animation, I guess the, the difference would be a lot of the time that I find Foley kind of anchors animation a lot in the real world makes things feel like they have texture and weight because the difference with animation and live action there is that in live action, you have a lot of things like you have fully in production a lot of the time. And there mm -hmm. were actually people on a set in real life walking. There's, you know, things are recorded outdoors in animation. Everything is recorded in a studio. It's all kind of in a vacuum. Yeah. So you have no production fully or anything like that. So fully, I think in animation is even more important in terms of, creating this like real world environment that, uh, and, you know, adding footsteps and adding texture and adding kind of a realness to everything, even though it was technically, you know, all made in a computer and yeah, yeah. there, there was no production Foley or anything like that. Um, and then effects, of course, they, they really play together, I think. And effects, yeah. effects kind of adds that, um, big cherry on top of, of anything that's, you know, kind yeah. of out of this world, exciting, bigger, bigger than life. yeah, bigger, bigger larger than, than life. life. Exactly. So I'd say that's how they played together really well in this. And then, you, and then you pass it off to Gary and it becomes even bigger than, bigger and then than it becomes life. polished. Yeah. Well, beautiful. at least a little louder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of Gary, how, how do you start to think from a mixer's point of view about the interplay of Foley and effects? Uh, he, um, Certainly, the, uh, as Devin mentioned, the the Foley is going to convince you that something is real in an animated film. That is going to be the anchor. The effects, certainly when you are in a fantasy animated film like this, can help kind of blow that hyper real mm. um, uh, environment bigger than maybe you even imagined that it could. I think that it's the kind of thing where... Um, that was a conscious choice when we are in the real world, how big we're going to play some of these effects and how fanciful versus in the good luck world or the bad luck world. I mean, these are all, you know, one of a million choices that we're making to try and sell and, and convince the environment or the intensity of any given scene. And it has to be fluid as you move in between. She goes through, a, I mean, let's talk about a scene or two uh, going on an elevator, you know, from good luck to bad luck. I love right. that scene. Right. Uh, it's a big or, drop. A big drop. Yeah. Or her, uh, or her first entrance into the portal to good luck. How do you, what, what's your involvement in something like that, which are traditional sound design scenes? Are you involved? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I can sort of speak to both, um, you know, Pete Horner was our sound designer. So uh -huh. we're speaking a bit on behalf of some of the yes, amazing please. work that he's done. I yeah. don't, definitely want to credit him for everything that he's put into this. And Josh Gold, who also was a sound designer early on in the mm -hmm. movie, they both did fantastic work. But I think as far as, I think it goes both for effects and Foley. The, it's sort of a change in tone um, when Sam enters from the human world into the land of luck. Like you, we kind of saw in that teaser yeah. there. It's like everything is running so perfectly and smoothly and um, with total finesse and almost almost as though it's perfectly choreographed in this land of luck. And then Sam is kind of this 
lovable, clumsy, yeah. human, very yeah. human, you know, very kind of a bad luck in some ways character. And she kind of crashes, crash lands into this uh, world. And I'd say effects and fully wise, um, we really wanted to emphasize that contrast with her in yeah. those moments, which is, um, which was sort of like, we wanted to have a bunch of debris flying around yeah. fully wise and effects wise. We, yeah, we definitely played up that, uh, difference between the two worlds. There. Right. And as much as the Foley really anchored the reality of it, you can almost embellish it further through effects in that you can make some of the disruptions that Sam brings to the good luck world that much more, I don't know, accessible yeah. because yeah. you can overplay them a little bit. Whereas if you overplay fully, then y you know, yeah. you've busted the illusion. Exactly. I, I love, I love one of the scenes and I, I would love for you to walk me through it. I mean, in the early, early time, when she's in her kitchen, it's, it's Sam's first opportunity to be on her own. And there's almost the, the toast and the com comedic element there that's going on in her. It so shows her world being blown up. Can you what, sort of what does that seed evolve? I mean, you'll see some of it tonight, but yeah. Um, as far as Foley and effects yeah. go, um, that was one of the first scenes we worked on. Um, it's a great scene, and it was yeah. I, I kind of fell in love with the movie in that scene. I thought yeah. it was just so. Um, it really made Sam a more lovable character, and um, I think as far as Foley and effects go, we we actually both cut. Um, almost everything in that scene. Really? So okay. I fully covered almost everything and so did effects and we sort of made decisions. Um, some some things would play together. Some things we'd say, oh, the effects play better for that. Like the toaster was a really big thing. We had like eight renditions of the toast, the, just the right- the, I love the toaster. Yeah, just <laughs> the right um, pop for the toaster that wasn't behaving. Um, so for that scene, we both, cause it, it really kind of um, is one of those scenes where yes, everything is anchored in the real world as far as, it should all be covered by Foley because it's, you know, literal items that she's playing with. It's a lot of Foley props and whatnot, but because it's such the, to emphasize the way things play in a cinematic way, effects can also bring a lot to that by adding, you know, tons of different alts for things and like a more interesting toast squeak as it squeals down the wall with the jam. So that's a really good example. I think of how effects and Foley really play off of each other to both anchor those items as in the real world and embellish on them to make them that, even funnier. That, what, what, that, what do you do, Gary? I mean, it's that, that squeak, the jam, flopping down. Those things are comedy. Well, it is comedy, and yeah. you kind of want to make sure that the scene plays almost like a Fred Astaire dance yeah. sequence. Yes. That's a good one. That's you know, really you really want to make sure that it is funny, that it is entertaining, but it also has this... Um, chaotic um, uh, choreography to it to make sure that it, I don't know, that it has this flow, that it feels right. Really, I mean, it's hard to talk about mixing these kinds of things because they're such gut instincts that you have in the moment when you have these materials yeah. in front of you. And that's why I love mixing is that you're going to sit there and you know the materials that you have and you have to feel it and you're not really ready to turn it over until I'm not ready to turn it over until I feel that it's right. Yep. Um, it's not always the working case with the workflow. Sometimes we got people sitting with us, but you really want to put that, you know, your best foot forward and you don't know when it's there until you just feel it in your, in your heart that you know that it's working for you. Well, it's, it's funny that that scene that you mentioned that there's another scene where she's in her apartment and uh, the bed's going up, the blower's going by, things are falling apart. And it's, you mentioned for the stare, it's like Lucille Ball meets Ginger Rogers or something. Yeah. I mean, in a sense, that there is this choreography. When you brought up the word choreography, do you think in those terms, do you think in rhythm and melody? And totally. Like that? Totally, especially when we have a director that's a choreographer. I mean, yeah. Peggy was making sure that those terms were, you know, in common direction, commonly used words, you know, at the mix. But, you know, rhythm is always important. Yeah. You know, it uh, whether you want it to be slow, whether you want it to be fast, whether you're on a Chris Nolan film or whether you're on a, you know, uh, an animated Apple Plus film. Like every film is going to have its own unique rhythm. So I think that's kind of underneath it all, always. I do think rhythm and tone are sort of underused words almost because I think those have to be established early, I, I would think. But sure, sort of yeah. the tone of the It's film. your color palette, basically, if yeah. you were talking to the DPs, you yeah. know? Yeah. That it's it's not all, uh, just so you know, this 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 film is not all an 18 year old girl dancing around her apartment. Um, <laughs> There are explosions. <laughs> there are randomizers. <laughs> there are all kinds oh my God, of fun design. things. So oh yeah, <laughs> I think we have a clip if we could show uh, somewhere here. We have we're to get to the randomizer 
the big ex- randomizer explosion here in a minute. So mm. what? Are we, I'm not sure if that's sounds what we're exciting. seeing, but it'll be fun. Let's see what we got. It's coming from the in-between. There must be something wrong. We're going between good and bad luck, and these are big effects scenes. I mean, Gary, you've done Batman, Dark, Dark Knight. You've done these things. And, Confirmed. And we have a moment where, quite beyond anybody's control, the world might fall apart. Uh, can you set us up for this big, the, the randomizer, big explosion? <laughs> okay. In terms of elements, I, I, I should say. Well, uh, I mean... It, the, Maybe we should uh, back it up just a second because we do have the whole point is that these this explosion is a buildup of the bad luck crystals that explode and all of a sudden the world of luck is in peril. But we have good luck crystals and we have bad luck crystals and we have a contrast between these two. Of course, we're trying to create tone. We're back to tone. What uh, what is good luck? What does good luck sound like versus bad yeah. luck? Like as a concept. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. Very hard. You know, so, and this is where I would reference the notes that he <laughs> gave us. I'm no sound designer, you know, up is louder for me. But yeah. um, <laughs> um, but I will say Pete and Josh worked really, really hard to get this yeah. stuff through. And I want to represent them as, as well as yeah. possible. It's Feel a wonderful free to scene. Jump in. Yeah, anytime. Um, yeah, in general, these good luck crystals... The the source of these crystals I thought was funny because when I initially heard them, I thought it was like very rain stick oriented. Yeah. It turns out he had used like it was a Christmas themed dog collar that had <laughs> all these micro bells around it that he recorded at like 100K sample rate so that he could pitch manipulate it without getting any artifacts and, and all that. And it is this very rain stick like but unique. Of course, yeah. that's why we, we go through the, the process of design. Yeah, yeah and, exactly. Um, and opposite to that, the bad luck crystals were um, these magnets. They mm-hmm. were these almost like pill-shaped magnets. that They weren't flat, So because when you put two magnets together and they're flat, they just go click. Yeah. These had a bit more of a rhythm and a texture to them. Yeah. So then, now we have that contrast. Now, now let's take some of those elements. And now, I know that there's a lot of sound particles yeah, utilization yeah. through this. I do. I know that um, Pete um, specifically did a lot of design work on the good luck and bad luck crystals and the explosion. And I think, as you're saying, um, it was hard because the bad luck crystals are supposed to sound sort of like they stick together and they have a, a different essence than the good luck crystals. Right, which are more viscous more, almost. Yeah, and they yeah. clog the machine and then, yeah, I mean, yeah, complicated. I mean, these are, I would, I think, complicated things to create from yeah. a design level. very complicated. So, I mean, hats off to... To our crew that is not here. They were incredible. I know. They're they're so wonderful. I mean, I love that there's sort of some great high-end sparkle with these Mm -hmm. that come around. And even when we get in the middle of, one thing I was impressed with, the middle, even out of my very nice sound bar at home. uh, Sonos? uh, Just curious. (laughs) It's actually a a a 10-speaker prototype built by the former engineers of the Grateful Dead. It's unbelievable. Oh, uh, wow. It sounds great. Let's talk. you have all that low end and you have all this stuff and you have, but yet you have this definition on the high end that is every bit as big as something you would see in a Terminator movie or something like that. Oh. It feels like at times. So can you talk about working with those frequencies in a way um, when you get to a big scene in animation? Well, the, the nice thing is that the spectrum is there for us to play with. I mean, yeah. um, 
you know, on top of all that, we've got John Debney's score, which I have to say, yeah. I love the score to yeah. this movie. Yeah. It's so good. Debney is so- and There's a lot, and there's a lot of music in it. There is a, yeah. lot, of music. a lot of music in it. Um, but he's really good with these themes and, and playing Sam's theme and, and playing Bob's theme. And it, it, the music itself is wonderful. I'll encourage you all to give yeah. it a listen. Yes. Um, but at the same time, you know, these decisions of- frequency range and where things are going to land, they're changing moment to moment at any given time. Like when we do have those crystals in that super high end, you're not necessarily going to lean into flutes and cymbals and things like that in the music. You know, you're, you're constantly evaluating these things almost on a shot by shot basis to know what, to know what works and what doesn't work, what's what's a conflict and what isn't a conflict, but also emotionally, like, what do I need out of this scene in this moment? What really is the most effective element? And it very well could be a sound effect that you need or it could be music. You know, the, the one of a billion decisions that we make every day. I, yeah, I know I keep going back to this, but it's like, it's why these panels are so hard. It's like, how do you mix the yeah. shot? It's like, well, you, you know, uh, you, you, you try it stuff. Well, you yeah, stuff. you do. You really do. It, it is a lot of experimentation. And sometimes, you know, we are going to go strong with the music and we say, yeah, but now we're losing a lot of the texture. Okay. Well, maybe it's just the drums that we need to pull back so that we can, you know, fill in the low end from the sound effects, you know, whether it's the rumble or the explosion or the buys or whatever it is. At any given moment, you're analyzing that and it, equals up to a billion decisions at the end of the day, which is why I'm, I get tired at the yeah. end of the day. <laughs> you wouldn't know it. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things, I mean, it, there's so many elements that go into this type of movie. We have the big seeds and such, but I also really enjoyed, <laughs> it sounds cliche, but I enjoyed the characters and the sort of differentiating, I mean, from Sam herself to the the dragon, the CEO is Jane Fonda, right? Yeah. yeah. There's a certain elegance and fluidity through a dragon. And then you have, Bob the Cat, our, our comic relief. Can you tell me about his footsteps first? Sure. Got, They're Bob's adorable, first of all, <laughs> <laughs> as is he. Yeah. Um, you yeah. got to go light when it comes to a cat. Yes, yeah. yes. You got to go really light. But. Really cute, really light. Um, One of the, Bob specifically, but this kind of goes for all of the little creatures in the land of luck. So um, other the than- The leprechauns. Yeah, the yes. leprechauns. Yeah. Um, there, we have Bob, we have the leprechauns, we have the little pigs. The The idea of all of the creatures in the Land of Luck um, was that they were kind of petite and cute and didn't take up too much space. And other than the dragon, who is yeah. very large. But yeah. um, it was kind of a contrast um, that Bob Bob's footsteps needed to be very small and cute. And I know um, I was down in Foley a lot when they were recording them. And it was, it was fun to see. They had, you know, it was like little gloves and fingers <laughs> to do like the pitter pad of his yeah. little paws. But um, that was definitely a focus with him and just building up his character and just the size difference of the little characters in the land yeah. of luck to emphasize kind of the difference between big clunky Sam, the human pretending to be a leprechaun, and then the big presence of Jane Fonda, um, yeah. her character, the dragon babe. And when so. they first come together, there's this sort of meeting and everything. Um, Gary, do you, do you think in terms of character or are you just sound? I mean, how, no, uh, always character. Always You're character. always, yeah. You want to think as close as your director thinks is possible. Yeah. Um, you really want to try to figure out your director. And that's, I think, another super fun part about mixing is that you want to try and get into that director's headspace to figure out the language, the tone, how they are perceiving the movie in their head mm -hmm. so that you can find the knee jerk reactions through them. It's a, it's a weird thing. I know, but like, that's part of the fun challenge for me. But yeah, I'm always thinking about character. You're always thinking about environment. You're always thinking about tone. You're thinking about space. I mean, what, one of the aspects that I really do love about mixing for animated films is you are creating these environments, yeah. not just through backgrounds and not just through sound effects texture, but also in acoustical space. Like I'm a huge fan of Terry Porter. I'm just going to shout that out there. Yeah. Like, he yeah. is my hero. He is my inspiration because he really, I believe, in those early 80s movies, uh, you know, the, the well, Disney animated films, like he was the one that really 
brought texture to these acoustical environments yeah. and has been an inspiration the third, ever since. The third film I wrote about in 1991 or two was uh, Beauty of the Beast, the second sort of return to the Disney animation. It was brilliant. Mark Mangini and Terry Porter. Yeah, so, wow. yeah. And that article really was a huge inspiration no, for me. On. No, I'm no, not kidding you. I still have it. Oh. I still have my issue of that uh. magazine. I assure you, I'm not I'm not blowing uh. this up. It's, um, it's And that really has been the, the source of inspiration for, and I've done a lot of animated films, yep. but like that concept of perspective in animated films, which previous to those Terry Porter films really wasn't done. No. You know, the, there, the were slide, were, there were slide whistles and goofs. So <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. And you know, the dialogue track was up and if you yeah. got, you know, reverb, it was a treat. You know, yeah. if you actually go back, I just worked on the new Pinocchio for Disney plus, but if you yeah. go back and look at the old Pinocchio, there's this whole underwater sequence <laughs> and everybody's about <laughs> this the whole time. And you're like, we would never do that right now. They just kind of like, Thank God. they put the vibrato treatment on and they're like, <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> so, like, but like, and I'm totally, I hope I'm not dissing <laughs> that sound crew from way back when, but um, the, the, the fact of the matter is such um, consideration detail is put into these acoustical yeah. spaces to live and coexist with the backgrounds and the sound effects and these ambiences to make it that much more convincing. And it's a huge part of what we're doing. Including, I mean, there's so much that goes into it. And tonight, uh, for those of you who stay tonight, there is a uh, wonderful scene uh, at the be uh, near the beginning with there's a car ch there's a chase through a city street. Oh, and um, yeah. it is just, it's absolutely, talk about choreography and the, and the pace and the action. Um, and I know you're not going to be able to stick around to sort of introduce that clip. So to sign off here, I'd like, we all love oh, a good, Are we out of time? Tony? We all love oh, a good yeah. chase scene. Um, could you walk us through that? Because we got to say a chase scene that will end with our hero, our hero going to do the portal. Um, so... What have you taken away? What's Foley in this? Bob's involved. I mean, yeah. Sam's involved. And this, start it off, Devin. Oh, my gosh. This this scene is one of the best examples, I think, of the rhythm and choreography yeah. aspects of this movie. And I'm sure you will agree. I and, agree. Yeah. Um, I concur. It, it is such a fun chase scene. It, uh, and at, the fo Foley for it, um, again, was it was super rhythmical. I mean, there's all these moments that happen, like, you know, with – Sam getting interrupted by bikes that fly past her. And yeah. then, oh, she runs into a pedestrian. And then Bob is is running away from her and he's hopping from like umbrella to umbrella as the umbrella is rhythmically open in time. Her. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He's, he's, he's totally taunting her. He's totally her. taunting her. And it's kind of like this cat and mouse game, yeah. but it's all timed out perfectly to the music that's yeah, happening in that, that scene. Too. Yeah. Almost, so, so that was, I would say the Foley in that scene, that was our, that was like, you know, music and rhythm was God in that fun. scene to us. Fun. We, it was, it was a really fun scene to cut. Um, cause it's not every day that you get to cut Foley and be like, Oh, well maybe this isn't like perfectly in sync, but it shouldn't be because yeah. it's supposed to be, it plays better when it's rhythmic. And yeah. I'm sure Gary, right. can the, the umbrellas in particular, I love that. And, the, yeah. and the trees going down. Yeah. 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 The trees bending. And even, you know, at the end when the music stops, that rolling dumpster becomes oh. an <laughs> element of the yes. music, you know, and that's a combination of effects and Foley as well, but it becomes, yeah. you know, the score of that moment. You have it's an elegant scene, moment. an elegant scene that runs ends with a rolling dumpster in an alley. It's right. kind of fun. It's yeah. better than it sounds. I promise. Yes. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's true. We're not showing that clip now. That's showing tonight. I mean, is that the deal? That, that's the that's the eight minute clip. It is part I see. of that. Oh, okay. Certainly tonight we get the the chase scene in full, and I just I had to, I got a kick out of it. I got to say because it does have all all of the elements of a chase scene that you might have with Laurel and Hardy at a certain yeah. point. Mm -hmm. Or you might have in a real, uh, not say an action thriller, but in a real, a real movie. Yeah, so, uh, in a live action movie. Yeah, and th there's a really? little nod to Looney Tune in yes. there, oh, a little yeah. bit, yeah. you know. But that's joy. Like, that's the, good stuff. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. want, you know, tap into something, tap into the best. Get, uh, to get, get that a boing. Uh, a, a, a little yeah. bit. At the same yeah. time, is the most innocent chase scene you'll yeah. ever see too. Yes. You know, a girl yeah. chasing a cat. She, you know, she's chasing the cat and runs into a tree and hits a bus. I mean, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, we are at 1230. Lunch is going oh, wow. to begin shortly. Um, I I can't thank you enough. Um, coming down, this is a team that works off and up at Skywalker Sound and um, up north, and I'm happy to bring some of my Bay Area 
uh, compatriots down to this LA event. So, Devin, thank you. Thank Gary, you so much. Thank you, thank Tom. You. And Apple thank TV you guys Plus. for coming. Thanks, everybody. Apple TV Plus, thank you.